by Design and welcome to Throwback Thursday. This is a little weekly series that I do that encourages us to dig back into our stash of older, beautiful older products and bring them to life with something new. So today we're actually kind of getting into the throwback machine, the wayback machine, and we're going all the way back to 2005 to take a look at Prima's French Riviera collection. I love anything beach themed. And this um, collection just caught my eye right away. It is nautical, it's beachy, it's kind of, uh, it's very, very vintage and it's very lovely. So I have it in the six by six and the A4, which is not quite eight and a half by a little more than 11 and a half. And I've been doing a lot of cleaning. I don't know what it is. I've just had this cleaning bug, organizing bug. And I found this in the closet and I was like, I need to use this. And then I went through my pile of abandoned uh, folio bases. Sometimes I design them and I think, oh, I don't want to use that. This I think is real similar to one that we just did. But this is a little six by six trifold. So you can see it's going to kind of be like this. I've already covered this with papers from the collection and I've covered the spine. But I'll just tell you very quickly, I took two sheets of 12 by 12 cardstock, cut them horizontally at six and overlapped the six inch edges to make this big long piece. Then I scored at six, six and three quarters, folded, scored at six and six and three quarters. And then for this third fold, you have to go a little shorter because otherwise it won't fold in nice. So this third fold is five and three quarters. And then I did another fold at, let's see, two and three quarters to make this little pocket flap page. So I'll write those measurements down on the blog so that you can follow along. But you can see it looks like this. This folds like this. This folds back like that. So you've got a pocket here and you've got a pocket here. And then I just add gussets to my pockets. Gussets are just little folded pieces of paper. Um, I usually do mine about an inch wide. The reason we use gussets is that it gives you the full width of the pocket. If you just put adhesive down, you do not get the full width of your pocket, but a gusset allows you to use absolutely every bit of that area. So I'll show you very quickly. This looks pretty good. Here's just a scrap. And what I'll do is I just put that in there. You can measure if you want, but I find this works really well for me. And for those of you who've done gussets a million times, you can skip ahead a little bit to see what the next thing is. So I'm gonna trim this. Okay, so it's gonna be just below one and three quarter inches. And it doesn't matter what paper you use because no one ever sees this, this disappears. But it does give you the full width of that pocket, which is awfully nice. So I'm just going to fold this in half, just like that. Now you come in and you put your adhesive on one side of this little flap. And then put the folded side on the outside edge of your paper. And I just kind of use my fingers there to line it up so that it's it's not hanging out. You don't want it to hang out. All right. And I can see I just need to trim a little tiny piece off here and we'll be good to go. Nice. So then you put your adhesive on this part of the flap and on this part of the flap and that folds in. All right, so that's that little detail. So I kind of played through here to figure out what I want to do. Over here on the left, I cut a five and seven eighths by six inch piece from the six by six pad. And then I took a piece from that A4 and I did two, I think these are five and a half. Yes, five and a half inch by eight, and I think it's eight and a quarter. 
and I scored a little half inch flap. You see that? And that goes on the back. And then I scored each of these at five and a half. So this is a little pull out page and we've got this little flap on the front. And this is just gonna glue down right here. And this is a great basic folio design. You can use any paper in the world with this for any occasion. So see, you press that into place and then this will open out this way and it will open out this way. And I might line, I will probably line parts of this to cover up where the paper was joined, but um, that's real simple. Then in the center, I've made, um, this is from that eight, um, you see this, this is the long ways, like this. So I cut it at six, and then I turned it long ways, and I figured out where to score. You can see where I marked my pencil but this is about two and seven eighths and about eight and five eighths. And if you do that, you'll end up with this little gatefold on the front. On the back, I added two more of those little folded flaps and this is gonna be a hidden pocket. And this is going to go right here. So see, you've got your two flaps. It opens up, and then I put a little pocket in the center. The pocket is, I want to say it's five and a half. Yep. Five and a half by two and a half. And then to go inside, I also went to that. A4 pad and I cut a five and a quarter inch strip, folded it in half, and I didn't measure, I literally just folded mine in half, but it's about five and seven eighths. And then this becomes a little tuck in right here. So that slides into our little hidden pocket and comes over those flaps. Isn't that fun? Then on this page, um, let me see, what did I do here? I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, this is fun. So this is our narrow page, right? So I started out from the six by six and I trimmed it to five and five eighths by six. And then I trimmed two more pieces of this floral from the six by six to the five and five eighths. And I scored half inch flaps on the back. And this one goes on the bottom. And this one goes on the top. Then I thought, well, I could add flaps to the sides as well. So I took, went through my scraps. These are four, right about four and a quarter by five and a half. And I glued one on the bottom and one on the back. So this is this whole little mechanism. It's just a nifty little packet. And this will go on this far right hand side. So now all we have to do is decorate this and I'm gonna work on that. I will tell you that I cut the spines to just below three quarters of an inch in width by six inches tall. I like to do that, it really reinforces. And then the covers are of course six by six. Pretty simple, but it's gonna be beautiful. So I'm gonna go to work here and um, figure out exactly what we're doing. I'm gonna decorate the inside. You can decorate the inside of yours. However you like, I've got a stack of scraps that I'm gonna to use to add um, elements to this. I've got some 
cut aparts and I've got a bunch of chipboard. Evidently I bought a, all the chipboard that came with this collection. And then I also have some uh, Rene Bouquet's beautiful board that I'm gonna be using. So I will come back and show you what I have done in just a little bit. Okay guys, here it is all finished up. I love the way this turned out. Um, you can see I took this Rene Bouquet's tag and she has the beautiful like leaves and stuff, sea, sea grass, all of that. But then I took torn pieces of my paper and decoupaged it over and then added some inking, just some ink splatters. Here's her beautiful new mermaid. And I dressed her up with some pearls, flat back pearls. These are her sea glass, beautiful beads that I clustered around the base just to make it look like she's floating in bubbles. This is another cute little sea set, these little fish, these little tiny seahorses, little tiny starfish. So I included those with a die cut sand dollar and then some shells and some real sand from my stash. This is an older little birdie flower. I'm not sure what they called these. I've had these for forever. And then little birdie arctic ice um, embossed daisies and then the aqua tulips and then this ribbon I don't think really reasonable ribbon carries this anymore. This was um, an ombre organdy, but organza. But if they do, I'll link it in the description box and all of these other things. Then I created a little charm dangle on the front instead of on the spine to top off the, the tag. And this beautiful globe is part of the mermaid trinkets. And then these other little pieces were just bits and bobs that I had in my stash. So this little clip, we untie the tie and um, here's, I found a little scrap of burlap in the papers, so I just tucked that in there. This is very much, you know, just like bits and bobs put together to create the finished album. It turned out really, really, really pretty. So this opens out and we already went over how to do all the different little mechanisms. This little clip holds this in place. You can see I created one of my little magnetic closures, and I'll talk more to you when we get to the back of this. And I created a little flip book here, just layered up. I found some textured pieces of the wood grain and stuck those in there just to add interest. And then this flips out, this flips down. I use this piece to cover up a, a, a bad score line. That's a really, really good tip, you can do that. And then this opens out like this, and then here is this piece. And you can see I just cut this little piece of paper. I folded it, tucked it behind this panel of our wood grain paper. And then the magnet is actually under this little ticket on the front and under this little piece of wood grain paper here. And of course, this also opens out this way. And I'll probably, I'll come in, I forgot to do that. I've got a a bad score and I've got a union line here where we joined the papers and I'll cover those up with some paper once I've done this little tour with you. It's funny, you think you're done and then you go through and you go, oh, I forgot to do that. Anyway, here's our little side flap and that we scored the double pocket in. And these little tags are also Rene Bouquet's beautiful board. And I inked these up with distress inks, um, you know, just by, tamping it on with a foam applicator. And this is um, Mermaid Lagoon and tumbled glass. And then I came back and sprayed it with some um, glimmer mist and then just cut little pieces of paper to cover and the back is blank. You can put photos there. Here's a little tiny photo folio. I just folded paper, covered it with scraps. So this fits in this part of the pocket. I love the vintage feel that this has. It's such a pretty, all the patina and the browns, it's really beautiful. Then this little shallow pocket, in cleaning out my stash, I found this little matchbook. So tuck that in there as a fun little place to write down notes, um, just cute. And then another image from the paper collection and those fit in this little side pocket the anchor and rope and mariner's compass are just fussy cut from one of the three by four cards. So then this flips out. This turned out really fun. Remember, this is the one where we had it flapping up and flapping down. 
So this is another piece of Renee Bouquets, and I did the same thing with this, where I just sponged on my Mermaid Lagoon ink, and then I sprayed it. This is Tim Holtz. I want to say it's the bronze, the antique bronze. It's got that wonderful copper finish. So this, I just glued right along this edge here, and then I tucked in a little image a couple of photo mats you could do a photo here and photos here and that just tucks back behind there like that and then you can do journaling on the back of this photo so love this piece really really pretty i'll probably come back and add some beautiful beads there too so this serves as a lift tab and then here's the inside of that i created a little tuck spot here for journaling and then you can put a photo and then below is this one. And again, room for a photo and a tiny bit of journaling. Then this flips down. And then remember we did these two little flip flaps here. So I use stickers to create turn tabs. And this opens out like this. So a lot of room for photos, even though this is not what you would consider a huge mini album, there's lots of room. So room for another photo here. And then of course it just flaps closed like this. And that brings us to the center. This is the one where we made the hidden pocket. So decorated up the cover with, this is a Rene Bouquet starfish that I just hit with that antique bronze and then layered up some chipboard pieces and a little key that goes in the hidden pocket back behind that we created. And then we also did some little flip flaps here using the stickers that came with the collection to do the turn tab. So here's a little starfish. And this turns out room for a photo. Here's I found this also when I was cleaning out a bin. This cute little library card journaling tag. This flips out like this. And then here's a pocket on the inside. And I just piled up a bunch of cut-aparts. Now this cut-apart was too big to fit in, but I loved the scene. So I scored it. The back side is this old ocean liner, right? So I scored it between the two. Now you can put a photo here. And um, you've got a really neat little photo folio there. So that tucks in here. Here's just one of the beautiful French Riviera images, a little tag from the cut apart page. And then I just put this whole piece in just as it is because you can put a pretty large photo on the back and you've got room for journaling there. So it's such a fun little project. I really, really had a good time putting this together. And it feels so good to dig into older products and use them up and actually make something beautiful with them. I, I want to try to do this more. I don't know if any of you have this collection in your stash, but even if you don't, I bet you have a collection that you could use this same folio design and measurements um, to do something similar. I just wanted to do something beachy because summertime and I, I love the beach and um, this just felt like fun to me. So anyway, there you go, guys. There you go. Throwback Thursday. And um, please give this a like. Leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Tell me what you'd like me to see, like to see me do this summer. I'm going to keep up with the Throwback Thursdays, the Tutorial Tuesdays. I might have to do just a couple times a month. I have a lot on my schedule for projects for like Spellbinders and other, other companies. But um, I love Throwback Thursdays. It, it makes me so happy to dig into my stash and use stuff that's been sitting around. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Subscribe and join the fun. And now I'm going to go get my craft on. Bye.